Some people in the comments section have told me that my midsection is not like other fitness YouTubers. They tell me it's thicker, and to that I can only say, thanks I guess? I've also been told that it's more similar to the kind of core you would see on an old time strongman, and now that is a compliment. And to be honest, it's not a coincidence, because I do a fair amount of the things that those guys did. Because like those guys, I'm far more interested in a functional and powerful core rather than cover model abs. I mean, I don't have the cover model face, so what would be the point? Whereas modern bodybuilders focus on building the upside down triangle, the V taper from wide shoulders to slim waist, old time strongmen had no such interests. Instead, they focused on lifting things at awkward angles. They performed movements like the bent press, the squat press, and the anyhow lift. The anyhow lift is a lift that allows you to lift things anywhere you like, as long as you lift them off the ground. You see, they often had to get creative, owing to the absence of the squat rack in many cases. And the result of picking things up from a twisted position in one hand or whilst leaning sideways is that you build up those obliques. These being the muscles on either side of the torso that give you that nice detail on the side of your abs and that are responsible for lateral flexion, bending sideways, and rotation of the core. Thing is, some bodybuilders actually avoid training them as they can also result in a slightly thicker looking waist because you're adding muscle on either side, creating less of a contrast between the shoulders and that narrow waist. Apparently, bodybuilders really like that kind of Barbie waistline for some reason. But increasingly, people are starting to appreciate the more powerful aesthetic of the old-time strongman more and more. And moreover, this physique will allow you to develop more real power, because outside of the gym, most of the heavy lifting that you do will be uneven. You might lift a child on one arm and then bend down sideways to pick up their toy when they drop it, or when they decide that they wanted Chase's car to come with them downstairs and not Marshall's car or Liberty's car as they previously told you. I do this literally all the time. And this exact movement is pretty close to the side press or the kettlebell windmill. These are exercises that strengthen and stretch the QL muscles, as well as building massive stability in the core and strengthening the obliques. So right away, if you want a thicker and more powerful old time strongman like core, you can consider adding these to your routine. Or maybe you're carrying luggage or some shopping and one side is loaded more fully than the other. The result now is that you're stabilizing using your QL muscles, obliques, multifidus to keep yourself from toppling over that direction. This most resembles something like a suitcase carry where you're gonna go for a long walk carrying a kettlebell in just one hand. Again, there's a direct line between these awkward looking lifts and the kinds of things we actually do in the real world. So again, if you want more functional strength, consider incorporating those sorts of movements. When you try and push a heavy object, it's unlikely you'll be lying down as you might do during a bench press. Instead, you'll probably be pushing from a standing position, digging your heels into the floor to ground yourself. And you might even push sideways with your shoulder or try and rotate the body as you push. This resembles a cable press, a wood chopper, or a pile off press. And speaking of chopping wood, that also requires a huge amount of rotation, generated by the obliques, serratus muscles, rhomboids, and hips. The same thing goes for hitting a baseball, swinging a golf club, throwing a ball, throwing a punch, or delivering a powerful roundhouse kick. More reasons to train rotation to train the cable wood chop, to practice hitting the heavy bag, or to try one of my favorites, the bodyweight kick through. Now that will give you some snappy rotational power. This sort of training essentially prepares you for any eventuality and any movement you might need to make. In the same way, it's important to protect yourself from the unexpected online. And that's where today's sponsor, NordVPN comes in. Got ya. NordVPN is a virtual private network, which is a tool you can use to protect your internet browsing. It works by letting you connect to a server located elsewhere, hiding your IP address and browsing activity from any near do wells One example of how this might protect your data is against a man-in-the-middle attack. This is an attack that can occur when you connect to a public Wi-Fi, like a coffee shop. If someone nefarious happens to be connected to the same network, they can potentially listen in on your traffic. And then the world might know that you spend way too much time browsing the Bluey subreddit. 
NordVPN can also be used to access region-locked content by tricking streaming services into thinking you're browsing from those locations. You can also use this to access time-limited services before the time is up by switching to a different server. And it comes with a host of additional features like threat protection, which automatically blocks malicious websites. So go to nordvpn.com forward slash the Bioneer to get a big saving on a two-year plan. Thanks again to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. On with the show. You guys know me. I'm certainly not one to equate manliness with physical strength. That's a boatload of BS. But I really can't understand those that train to be stronger than their peers and then avoid all these functional movements because they are afraid their waist will get a bit wider. Have I missed something here? As you can see, there's a direct benefit to doing this type of training. So I believe we should aim to train the core from every direction that we need to move in, in the real world. That means training flexion, extension, rotation, and lateral flexion. Again, this just seems like an absolute no-brainer. Ignoring rotation makes no more sense than skipping leg day or ignoring all pulling movements. Likewise, I believe we should be training all the different energy systems and expressions of strength, training at different speeds. Because delivering a roundhouse kick is a completely different expression of power and strength than carrying a heavy object on one side or preventing someone from pushing you over. One is anti-resistance, one is strength, endurance, and one is explosive power. We haven't even looked at max strength here. We need movements that train all these different speeds. So for example, you could do the kick throughs or the heavy bag to develop some explosive rotational power. Or how about rotational red bull slams or Bulgarian bag spinning? You could then do some one-armed push-ups in order to gain anti-rotation. This is core stability, preventing your body from twisting down to the ground on the unsupported side. And you could train with cables to develop pure rotational strength. You could train crunch to get that flexion of the core, but then use dragon flag or ab wheel rollouts or the lane push-ups to train anti-extension, keeping the torso rigid. Now, of course, not all these angles and speeds are made equally, and you don't necessarily need all of them. There aren't that many explosive lateral flexion movements. I mean, you've got cartwheels, and I do like cartwheels, but most people aren't going to need them that badly. And that's okay, because there aren't that many in the real world either. Here, you might focus on stability with side plank, side press, and the suitcase carries, and that would probably be more than enough. It's certainly more than most people are going to be doing. But the takeaway is that if you train your core from multiple angles and with multiple intensities, then you will develop a tree trunk thick core that is genuinely powerful, and you'll look like an old time strongman. If you like this approach to training, training from multiple angles and at multiple speeds to get a comprehensive strength and performance profile, then you might like my ebook and training program, Superfunctional Training 2.0. That program includes exercises that cover all the major movement patterns and even things like grip strength and toe strength. It comes with a full program that's adaptable to any ability level and any equipment, over two hours of instructional videos and an 80 plus page ebook that delves deep into the science of human performance. If that sounds cool, you can find a link in the description down below. Either way, thank you so much for watching this one, guys, and bye for now.